have run out of excuses and we are running out of time. We're looking at mass starvation within 10 years. The reality is we're sleepwalking into a catastrophe. Change is coming, whether you like it or not. the rebel camps as we attempt to hold the spaces we took in London on April 15th. What's happening on the streets and what is it like to be arrested for the cause? That's coming up. Right, so uh, we're just moving to the front now to where people are getting arrested. It seems quite calm here at the moment. So, don't actually see any action right now. Maybe they've filled up their van again and they'll come back shortly. <laughs> so it's Tuesday the 16th and I'm standing on Waterloo Bridge and I've just found someone to talk to me, Suki, who was here last night when um, some serious stuff went down. Suki, um, what happened? Uh, so last night we uh, some numbers dwindled a lot as you expect as the as the night drew on. Uh, all of the people who were willing to get arrested went uh, to hold the front of the sort of southern end of the bridge, and uh, we all made lots of music, lots of singing, lots of banging of drums. There were probably about what 80, 90 arrests, I think. Um, yeah, I've been told that 108 people were were arrested peacefully. Oh, yeah, yeah and, no, uh, was know, sort of everyone down went, went willingly or went sort of you know went limply, but nobody's as as resisted or mm-hmm. caused unnecessary problems or anything like that. Um, Can you paint a picture of the scene last night, maybe kind of as darkness fell? What did the bridge look like? It was peaceful chaos. It was... That's um, a very good way to put it. Yeah, it was very... There was a lot of anticipation in the air. A lot of very, very cool support for those being arrested for sort of, you know, the last bit of support before they're fully taken away. Mm -hmm. Um, And a a surprising amount of support from the public, actually, who are obviously being disrupted by this. An awful lot of people have come, they've offered us food, they've shaken our hands, they've given us hugs and kisses and said, we really appreciate what you're doing and thank you for it and things like that. Yes, yeah, the public have really been amazing. Even the police have sort of unofficially said that it's the best protest that they've personally worked. I think four or five police officers have said that to me personally and that's just sort of the, the police that I've interacted with when, when I was stood at the banners and things like that. So There was definitely a strong uh, change, it felt, in police attitude over the course of the evening because at the beginning there was this, uh, this obviously the tension of everyone knew they're going to probably come and try and clear the bridge, they're going to arrest a lot of us yeah. um, and so everyone was quite tense for a little while but, you know, kept get playing the music, people were obviously being taken away and then around what about 3 a.m. maybe I think three, four, it three, dropped four. off again yeah yeah there were so few people left it was it was probably what maybe 50 maybe not even that people. I don't think I think at one point we had 30 people give or take sort of 15 ish yeah. either side and it, it did get a little bit dicey for a little while we sort of just barely just barely, barely held onto on the bridge so you know, if you're listening if you can help tonight we'd really really appreciate the support mm-hmm. it's um it is very much needed and very much appreciated for people who are listening who maybe, and I probably actually count myself in this, who don't quite understand the process of how, how does it shift from the police being all friendly in the day and kind of facilitating what we're doing and no, what, what actually nice. happens when they start arresting people? So you notice a whole lot of vans and then a lot of people in fluorescent yellow jackets coming up. Usually they sort of come along en masse and then they'll start giving out warnings. Uh, they will tell you if they're going to institute section 12 or 14, which means they get to give you fewer warnings, basically something along those lines. Like last night, it was basically, they would just dart in and grab someone or another person or another person. It was very sort of random feeling. Random. Yeah, and so there, it was a great feeling of tension of we don't know which one of us is going to get grabbed now because there's no sign. It's just suddenly someone's hauled out. 
and then as people sort of are, as the numbers dwindled and as the you know, temperature got colder and people just started to you know all sort of chill out and get tired I think more than anything uh, it became sort of a lot more a lot more cooperative, you know, the police walking around asking people who are lying on the floor, are you warm enough? Uh, are you conscious? You know, you're right. Uh, you know, so to make sure you don't get too thirsty. Well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. There are a few people who are locked to the bottom of the uh, of the truck stage. A few people <laughs> are on the top of it. And they'll keep coming and poke their heads under and say, you still all right down there? Yep, fantastic. Check you still there. <laughs> fishing hat and he is just really not moving, he's stubbornly shaking his head. They just grabbed him under his arms, they picked him up and just shoveling me out of the way, moving him off the bridge now. They're actually getting slightly rougher than they were before. I think they're starting to lose their patience. They're pushing people out of the way. Hello, I'm Greg and I'm 69 and I'm retired and I'm from Bath, so I'm here with the Bath Affinity Group and... Let me see, Monday evening on Waterloo Bridge, numbers were down a bit, and I suppose there were about 200 people here, and then the priest came along and pulled some people out and arrested them and took them away. So it wasn't, it wasn't a very um, traumatic process, really. I mean, they came along, they obviously were warning people, I suppose, although I couldn't hear what they were saying at all because it was so noisy, and then... They would carry people off or people would walk off with them. And um, and then they'll take you away and search you, um, which is all right, I suppose. You're being searched in the street. Lots of, lots of people have had that experience, I suppose. And then, you know, you get you get taken off to a police station and searched again. And, and then you get put in a cell, really. So I was in a cell for quite a lot of hours because they were trying to process so many people. So the solicitor said, that he thought I would be released under investigation, which I have been, and he thought it would probably fizzle out and there probably just wouldn't be any charges. Extinction Rebellion! No pollution and no littering. Um, just come across Gail Bradbrook, one of the co-founders of uh, Extinction Rebellion. As this episode's about arrests, I was wondering, Gail, if you could just tell me, kind of from the beginning of the movement, from its genesis what role you imagined that arrests would play in the goals of Extinction Rebellion? But, you know, actually, we had quite a lot of conversations about that, and there is a slightly divergent view. So some people are really a little bit mechanistic about it, like, we need this many arrests and this will happen, and that sort of thing. And I'm on, on record saying that type of stuff. And uh, I think there's a, a degree of truth in that, but I think there's also a wider feeling that being determined to get arrests as if it's kind of like some numerical game is is really the purpose of what we're doing there's something bigger than that there's much more heartfelt so here on the bridge we are doing a major disruption that's going to get attention and be a movement building my name's Rosie. We're in um, Oxford Street uh, roadblock for Marble Arch, just down the road from the Oxford Circus roadblock where I was just arrested about eight, nine hours ago. How long were you held? Um, so I arrived at the station, got out of the van at nine, and then I left at three, so six hours. Three in the morning? Yeah, OK. Cool. And now, how are you feeling? So you, it's, uh, the experience is really quite fresh, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah. Um, are you glad you did it? Would you have any advice for anybody prepping for it? How, how do you feel? Um, I, yeah, I feel really positive, actually, about the whole thing. We'll see what happens because it's under investigation so they'll probably get in touch with me soon about how where it's going to go mm. um, so just feeling a little bit like you know, I could still things could still happen so I'm not going to put myself as arrestable again yeah. and um, how do you feel in the bigger picture about having made this well, kind of a sacrifice, because you are going to have a bit of endurance around this and mm. perhaps a court case. Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel about having done that for Extinction Rebellion? I think I'm, I'm a tiny cog in something that really, like, something that really needs to happen, and I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, feel 
it's needed. It's this is the time now where this is the whole point is causing disruption, and I'm, I'm glad to be a part of it. Extinction rebellion. <laughs> that they were having some trouble over at Oxford Circus where lots of police had suddenly showed up and they were trying to get people away from the pink boat and so me and my affinity group moved to Oxford Circus and we sat down to support people and then basically they started arresting people and they tried to arrest the guy next to me but he had chained himself to the boat. So then they arrested me instead because I was not chained. And um, yeah, so then they took me into custody. So once they got me to stand up and leave the site, they took me into the van and um, they were very polite and very nice. Uh, there was a bit of confusion about which police station they were going to take me to because as you can imagine, all police stations were quite full at this stage. And so they asked me for, you know, some details and they searched through my bag and things like that. And then once you get to the station, it's, it's quite intimidating because there's a, an officer from the police station who then asks you all these questions and you have to give your fingerprints and they took swabs. And then I was in a cell and then it's just they close the door and you're there by yourself. And it, it wasn't horrible but it also wasn't great on the other hand i feel like i helped secure that site a little bit and oxford circus is still going we just walked past it and i feel like all of us being courageous is helping this rebellion move forward and hopefully it will get us to our end goal